Hi everyone, Ty Carr here. I got some information for you on the latest legislation that I hope you will uh, find useful. You know, while PPP2 is grabbing the headlines and businesses scramble to figure out if they can qualify for additional forgivable loans, there is another key benefit from the Consolidated uh, Appropriations Act of 2021. Well, there's multiple benefits actually, but another what I would consider a key benefit that you should not overlook for your business. It's the expansion of the Employee Retention Credit, ERC. This expansion has both retroactive benefits related to the original ERC, which came about during 2020 under the CARES Act, um, but it also has an extended version of the credit uh, for 2021. And that extended version of the credit as a new expanded eligibility for more businesses to qualify and larger amounts of credit that are going to be available. So the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, I'm just going to call it the act here. Um, it included a six-month extension of the ERC. And that six, so that six month extension went from goes from January 1st through June 30th of 2021. The ERC is a refundable credit against employer payroll taxes. Employers are eligible for the ERC if there was part or all of their business shut down. So either a partial or a whole shutdown of the business due to a government mandate, or if the business had a decline in gross receipts that met certain thresholds. So this ERC existed under the CARES Act, and it applied to quarters in 2020. The extension that we're talking about is going to cover January 1st through June 30th of 2021, and it has uh, some new rules and some new limits. Beyond the extending the credit into 2021, though, it also has some retroactive rules that go back and apply to the uh, to how you do the ERC for 2020 under the CARES Act. Now, as of uh, filming this, there's been some disagreement that I've seen in edit tax editorial circles as to whether all of the uh, expanded benefits of the new act for the ERC should apply retroactively. That's not how I read the act, and it's not how I see most editorials uh, that I rely on reading the act. So I'm going to, in this discussion, I'm going to take the conservative approach of only talking about the benefits being retroactive that we all know and agree are retroactive, and assuming that the some of the benefits that I'm going to talk about that are expansions of the credit for 2021 only apply to 2021. Uh, the caveat for that would be if... Uh, we get further guidance or liberalization of the rules that take some of these expansions for 2021 and push them back into 2020, well then we can all be presently surprised and if that further guidance comes out and that would be like a windfall. We're going to get more benefit for 2020 than we thought. But, but I don't see that is going to happen right now. Um, also, as of filming this, we don't really have guidance on the logistics behind coordinating the filing of PPP loan forgiveness and the ERC. So as I'm going to talk about in this video, um, there is opportunity now to coordinate the two so that you can actually claim both PPP and the ERC. Um, but we're just, I think it's going to be prudent for businesses to wait on filing for PPP forgiveness until more guidance is published on exactly how you do those filings, what forms, and how you coordinate uh, your loan forgiveness with claiming the ERC. And that guidance hopefully will come from the IRS. So let's talk about the ERC for 2020 and the retroactive benefits of the new act. Under the CARES Act, the credit you would claim related to 2020 was limited to a maximum of $5,000 per employee with qualified wages. The $5,000 i am computing is based on 50% of qualifying wages up to a maximum of $10,000 of qualifying wages for all calendar quarters. A business that qualifies for, will qualify for the credit if they had a partial or a complete shutdown due to a government mandate 
or for 2020, if they had a greater than 50% decline in income from the same quarter in 2019. Now, under this previous law, what, an important point that we'll come back to is that a business could not claim the ERC if they were already getting the PPP. So there was a, a no mixing rule in there. And so what we saw with many businesses is that they just blew past. They skipped, they completely skipped an evaluation of the ERC opportunity during 2020 because they were working on the PPP. Among uh, one of the changes, one of the retroactive changes made by this new act that goes back to 2020 is clarifying that group health plan expenses, health care plan expenses, can be considered qualifying wages even when no other wages were paid to an employee. So if you, perhaps this could apply even if you took the ERC, right? Maybe you took the ERC, but you didn't use these health plan expenses, now's an opportunity to potentially go back and pick up some additional credit. If you qualify, there may be additional credit there based on claiming the credit on these health plan expenses. But the one of the key issues here that's retroactive is this rule about not mixing PPP with ERC. The act has amended the rules so that an employer who received PP loans can claim the ERC as long as the wages used for the ERC are not paid with forgiven PPP funds. Now, this is retroactive to 2020, and this you know creates some uh, record keeping to think about, right? Because it's there's an opportunity here to go back and claim the credit for 2020 for companies that previously didn't do so because they just blew past it. They were receiving the PPP, right? But now, if you have not claimed uh, forgiveness on your PPP loan yet, it seems like there's some record keeping and supporting documentation that you can do as a project to be able to take both the PPP and the ERC. This will be a project to execute on this. and. I don't know what you do if you've already claimed PPP forgiveness. I'm not saying you can't still potentially do this. Uh, we'll probably we'll have to wait for some more guidance on that probably. So let's talk about the extended credit for 2021. An extended credit now can be claimed for qualifying wages still up to $10,000, but it's for each calendar quarter rather than for all quarters of the year. The credit now is expanded to 70% of that $10,000, which makes the maximum credit $7,000 per employee with qualifying wages per quarter. So think about this. This means that if you're claiming the credit, if you're able to claim the credit for Q1 and Q2 of 2021, you would get a $14,000 credit per employee per with qualifying wages. Now another change is that the ERC previously was only applicable to small businesses, which was defined as businesses with up to 100 employees. That threshold for, 2000, for the 2021 credit has been expanded to 500 employees, so more businesses will qualify as quote unquote small businesses for this purpose. Businesses still otherwise qualify for the credit if they had a partial or a complete shutdown due to a government mandate or if they meet a decline in the gross receipts test. The gross receipts test has changed. A business now with 20% or more decline in gross receipts will qualify for this 2021 credit. That's versus the requirement that they would have a 50, they would have to have had a 50% or more decline for to get the 2020 credit. It's also now possible for a business that didn't exist in 2019 to claim the credit by using quarters in 2020 as their comparison point. So my point of this discussion in this video is to point out that this ERC, the Employee Retention Credit, is a pretty sizable benefit if you qualify. It's being afforded to eligible small businesses and it's something that should be considered in coordination with the PPP. All right, I hope that's helpful. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care now.